For centuries, we've been told that love is a mystery of the heart. But what if it's more than that? What if love isn't just an emotion, but the fundamental force that holds the universe together? In the 13th century, the mystic poet Rumi hinted at a truth so profound that modern science is only just beginning to catch up. He called it the essence of life. We call it Rumi's timeless wisdom on love. Join us on a fictional journey from a 13th century classroom to a modern-day physics conference at Oxford, where we'll explore how Rumi's ancient wisdom on love may be the key to unlocking the deepest secrets of the cosmos. A low, reverent murmur. My friends, the world speaks of love as a feeling, a fleeting fire that warms for a moment and then fades away. This is a profound misunderstanding. Love is your true essence. Love is the vessel to the divine. But true love is not an emotion. It is a state of being. It is the eternal, boundless force that binds all of existence together. Maulana, we hear of two kinds of love, one for the human and one for the divine. Are they not separate paths we must choose between? An excellent question, my son. We have a term for this. We call it ishaq majazi, the love of humanity. And we call the love of the divine ishaq haqiqi. But they are not two separate things. They are not separate roads. The path of human love is the necessary first step. They are not separate roads. The bridge to the ultimate love of the divine. But Maulana, how can one find a love that lasts? The world tells us to search endlessly for a beloved to complete us. But the search itself is the blind part of the journey. What you are truly looking for is not a person, but a spiritual awakening. Lovers don't finally meet somewhere. They're in each other all along. The love you seek is not something to be found. It is already within your heart. It is the very essence of your soul, waiting to be discovered. It is your true self. The human love you discover is simply a reflection, a mirror that shows you the divine love that has always been within you. This is the bridge that love create. It is a path that takes us from the love of the human to the love of the divine. So we begin with Ishaq Majazi, which leads us to a spiritual state of being, to the eternal, boundless love of Ishaq Haqiqi. The love of the divine is the ultimate purpose. It is the destination and the beginning of all things. So in essence, human love is a lesson, a way to prepare us for the ultimate love of the divine, a process of inner purification, it is a preparation, my son. It is a purification that cleanses the heart and makes it ready for what is to come. A simple glass of water is refreshing and essential for life. But love is something far greater, far more vital. So love is something else entirely. As it is said, love is the water of life. Drink it down with heart and soul, for it is the only true source that will nourish and truly sustain you on this journey. Then how do we begin, Maulana? How do we take the first step on this path of purification and surrender? You do not begin with a plan. You begin with a feeling, a deep and silent pull that you cannot ignore. Let yourself be silently drawn by the strange pull of what you really love. Do not resist this current for it is your soul's true course. It will not lead you astray, for what you love is a pure reflection of your own divine essence. The purpose of love is not just to feel, my son, but to create. It is the most powerful creative force in the universe. This is why you teach us. In your light, I learn how to love, and through that love, we learn to create. Love is the art that makes all other arts possible, from the songs of the birds to the beauty of the gardens. The love that you have 
is the light that will show you the path. It is the wisdom that guides your very soul. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Tariq, who will bridge ancient wisdom and modern physics. Thank you. Today, I am honored to discuss the core philosophy of Rumi on love and its profound resonance with modern quantum physics. To Rumi, love is not a poetic idea. It is the fundamental, unifying force that holds the entire universe together. To Rumi, Love is the reason for the universe's creation. He saw love as the water of life. Without it, we are but dry leaves in the wind. This love is a force of constant renewal. Said. He had a deep, intuitive understanding of a universe where all things are connected. He was poetically describing what we today might call a unified field. This is a profound parallel to Rumi's mystical thought. He said, love is the binding force behind the universe, a concept of the quantum vacuum, a state of nothingness that holds all potential. It is the perfect analogy for Rumi's idea of the heart's emptiness. Rumi saw love as a bridge, a force that connects all things, transcending time and space. This is his core principle. He said, love is the bridge between you and everything. This is the truth of our existence. This philosophy holds that the human consciousness is part of a larger universal mind. We are all interconnected. This is why love is universal. This is the idea of interconnectedness. Everything in the universe is within you. The separation you feel is an illusion. Rumi's philosophy holds the key to living with greater meaning. He reminds us that love is the art that makes all other arts possible. In today's chaotic world, Rumi's love can heal us from the pain of separation and loneliness. It teaches us to see beyond our differences and to cultivate a sense of gratitude, love, and compassion for others. Rumi said, your task is not to seek love, but merely to seek and find. Rumi reminds us love isn't hunted down, it's uncovered. What blocks it are inner walls, fear, pride, resentment, shame. As obstructions soften, love emerges as warmth, kindness to self, tenderness to others, willingness to be touched by life. We don't create love. We clear space so what's perennial can breathe again. This is the key to true happiness and fulfillment in a world that often places far too much emphasis on external appearances and fleeting desires. By cultivating inner qualities like kindness, compassion, love and gratitude, we can create a more beautiful, more loving world for ourselves and for others. Rumi's wisdom offers us a path to peace, purpose and spiritual growth in today's chaotic, fast-paced world. Rumi's quantum of love reminds us that what truly matters is not what we see in the external world, but what we feel in the stillness of our hearts. It reminds us that love is the key to unlocking universal intelligence and creating a better, more loving world for ourselves and those around us. We must explore the interconnectedness of all things seeking harmony in the universe. So what did you think? Dr. Tariq made a compelling case. I mean, to hear Molana's poetry in that hall that refers to another force in the universe. It was. Uh, Tariq's fusion of ideas was beautiful. He's taking Rumi's core philosophy and casually relate it to the quantum field. He called it the quantum of love. I'm with him. For Rumi, love isn't just a feeling, it's the very essence of life. It's what holds everything together. The bridge analogy resonates with me most. We're still searching for a unified field theory to connect the four fundamental forces. What if we are missing a piece of the puzzle? What if there's a fifth force, 
a field we can't detect with our instruments, and Maulana intuitively understood it. He called it love. That's a bold hypothesis, but it's not without precedent. Dr. Tariq's mention of the quantum vacuum was brilliant. We know what appears to be empty space is teeming with potential, a fertile void from which particles emerge. Yes, and Rumi saw this in the human heart. He saw emptiness not as a lack, but as a source of immense potential. The two ideas feel remarkably similar, just expressed in different languages, Molana's poems and quantum physics. And the idea that love is a unifying field is the most exciting part. We have the Higgs field that gives particles mass and structure. Right. Rumi's love could be a similar field, an omnipresent field of consciousness. It gives everything its meaning and purpose. It could be the field that connects us all at a fundamental level. It would explain so much of what Maulana wrote, his ideas about the illusion of separation. Lovers don't finally meet somewhere. They're in each other all along, which makes so much more sense. If we're all connected by this underlying field of love, then separation is just an illusion of our physical reality. Cool. We measure and analyze, but Rumi suggests the truth is something we already have within us. Rumi's poetry isn't just about emotions. It's a manual for how to connect with this universal intelligence. Love isn't just something to feel. It is something to become. So what does this mean for us? It means we must expand our view of reality. We must accept the possibility that science and spirituality aren't separate paths, but different approaches to the same truth. In the stillness. Maybe the final force we're looking for won't be found in a particle accelerator, but in our hearts. I am glad we are here, John. I needed this. We have so much to discuss when we get back. You know, I've always found the most profound insights come not from the lab, but from moments like these. The mind needs space, a certain quiet. Well, that's our ride to the airport. I'm glad we had time to walk by the river and talk. Me too. It seems our discussion has just begun. If this video touched your heart, subscribe. It's inspired by the timeless wisdom in the seven book Rumi collection by Dr. Farid Mostaman. Whether you seek healing, love, clarity, or growth, these teachings will guide you inward to the truth of who you are.